Good morning, I'm Dilip Thakur, editor of Education World. Good morning, I'm Sumia Yasni, managing editor. Far away from India's cities and metros, in, the small, in small town India and rural India, a large number of private schools are mushrooming, which have taken it upon themselves to provide high quality English medium education to children who are cruelly underserved by government schools. Uh, as testified by a latest and very well done Ernst and Young survey, tier two and three cities are growing at almost 40% economic growth they are recording, much higher than what even our metros such as Bombay and Delhi are recording. So within these cities there is you know, a new middle class which has sprung up, aspirational middle class parents who want the best education for their children. And in the latest issue of Education World, yes. we have uh, focused on the bright diamond schools of small town India. It's, uh, a ma it was a good education for yes, us yes. also, India, yes. or driven by uh, a philanthropic, a combination of philanthropy and enlightened self-interest, are promoting schools which are providing excellent education uh, to the new middle class rising in these cities at affordable yes, uh, prices. And, yes, most of these institutions which we have profiled in this story, which covers from right from you know Itanagar in Arunachal Pradesh to Rani Pet in Tamil Nadu, you'd find that most of these institutions are trying to provide education, high quality education at affordable price. Prices which you know newly emergent middle class in these metros can afford. So I think we all need to support uh, these edupreneurs uh, who are springing up all over the country and and and. Uh, through a mix of philanthropy and, and self-interest are pre, pre, uh, offering excellent education to India's new uh, rising young population. Yes, we highly recommend you read this story because it gives an entirely new perspective to what's happening in K-12 education in small, time, in small town India where the real, I think, market for uh, high quality education it is springing up. And in our second lead story also, we have uh, once again looked at the union budget which was presented last month and uh, in it we lament the very poor uh, allocation made for education. In fact, the word education is hardly mentioned the, in the entire 100 minute uh, budget speech Correct. of uh, the pro tem yeah. uh, finance minister mm -hmm. Piyush yeah, Goyal. And, and I think this time again the allocation for education is only about 93,807 crores which is roughly aggregates to 0.5% of GDP. GDP. Whereas uh, way back in 1966 the Kotari Commission said we should center plus state should be spending 6%, a minimum of 6% on public education. Against this for the last 50 or to 60, 70 years, we have been spending only an average of 3.5%. And I think most importantly in this issue, again, I think for the sixth or the seventh year in succession, we have presented a brilliant plan on how to raise resources for education. For public uh, education. Yes, by cutting a lot of other expenses, spend expenses establishment expenses and uh, levying some ad a nominal additional taxation it is possible to develop develop india's uh, uh, human resources which is the, uh, we are blessed uh, with the world's largest child and youth population but unfortunately instead of developing this vital resource yeah. we are letting the government, citizenry, mm -hmm. society is letting this vital resource uh, be, uh, it's, it's not being uh, developed sufficiently, which, uh, we, in, uh, which is a tragedy. So that's our second lead story. Yes, and also in our March cover story in Parents World, we've done a very interesting cover, cover story where we've covered India's nascent homeschooling revolution. So here we talk about, we've spoken to a few select families across the country who've forsaken the rote and exam-centric mainstream education system and educating their children at home. It gives very interesting insights into how to homeschool if, if you have the wherewithal, the patience, the, the competence and the time to do it. Yes. And these are people who are disillusioned with uh, uh, mainstream education, whether in pri private or public sector. 
and they feel most of them are highly educated themselves and they feel that they can provide their children a better education, a more relevant education to the needs of the 21st century at home. So please read Parents' World as well. It's, it has some uh, very good insights into the new globally uh, uh, becoming popular homeschooling, homeschooling system. Yes, yes. So that's it for this month. Thank you very much. Thank you.